Alright, hello and welcome back to Let's Play yet another No Name Aim game. Today's No Name Aim game is, of course, Night Striker. That's right, winners don't use drugs. That's right, kids watching, don't use drugs. Drugs are bad. And on that note, Night Striker, 1989. As you're gonna see, it's a pretty hardcore, super scrolling game. Well, I guess Outrun came out in like 86 or something. And that had some pretty insane stro super scrolling. But dang, I mean, you thought Mag Max was an example of how far things had come back in the late 80s. This game just pushes everything out. This is like a 95 game, at least. So our first button is a nice, happy shot. Second button is a, the same nice, happy shot. No charging or anything, so hello, auto fire. Unfortunately, it's, the controls are quite a bit like um, flight sticks. So up means down and down means up. More baffling though. Oh no, because up upright means down right, and up left means down left, which is okay because I thought it was like up right means down left, and everything got bad. It's it's oh man, flight controls. I don't know. I mean, okay, if you were actually in a plane, you'd probably be used to them by now. So anything other than flight controls would freak you out. So okay, granted. Now, in other games like this, it feels a little artificial, but if you focus on what's happening on the screen enough, you can kind of adapt to any sort of control scheme. You just have to stop thinking about what your hands are doing, and just think about what the, control the character on screen is doing. And it certainly helps that the um, arcade graphics are like super smooth, super nice, fairly detailed. And I mean, the scrolling action is really nice, really smooth, super detailed. And so everything, like, you can just kind of wig out and focus in on, like, what's happening on screen. Man, I feel like MVP there was the buildings and not my shotgun. Laser shotgun. Ah, you can... If you're silly enough, you can hurt yourself. And in another interesting... Um, just thing, reminiscent of OutRun, now we've got branched arcade roots. So, hmm, maybe OutRun was the inspiration for this game. Well, I mean, uh, at the time, though, Sega also had games like... Oh, God, this is really a place where you have to just be able to focus in and do it right. Uh, Sega also had, like, Super Thunder Blade and then uh, Galaxy Force? I always get Galaxy Force and Galaxy Fight a little bit mixed up. One of them's, um... And a Super Scroller, uh shoot em up where you're playing as a um, spaceship in space, and the other one is a lackluster fighting game for the Neo Geo, but it does have a cat girl, and it's decently nice, so that's, that's just why I re remember that one. Oh, okay, oh my god. Well, at least it lets you continue, although after seeing those loops, I'm a little hesitant to. Oh, and if the, uh, good lord. I mean, the super scrolling, and then now this, you gotta kinda wonder, is this a Sega game? But no, if you remember from the beginning, it's a Taito. That's right, Taito made this game, not Sega. Even though it's got, like, essentially every aspect of, let's go to the sky. Essentially, it's got every aspect of, like, every other Sega arcade game of the time. So, I'm not entirely sure what Taito was trying to pull. Ooh. I know it's a graphical glitch, but... Oh, no upper slimits! And the music, too, it's... Well, the first stage had like that little air of that little melancholy air to it, which adds that extra tinge of specialness. But this music in particular is a little vague, a little generic. But it keeps the action going, and it's nice in the background. Which, again, not not something you can say for everything. Ooh, do the shots home? It's kind of an interesting little design choice that you have to grapple with at least slightly, like. Should the shots home? Because on one hand, if the shots home, then yeah, it's kind of like admitting that um, your game's maybe not the hardest and it doesn't require maybe the most skill. But on the other hand, you have to question yourself, like, 
does it really matter if it lands or not? Like, can you expect, can you reasonably expect a character to, like, even line up shots like this? And in this game, we're like, the controls are only so precise, and then the enemies are going everywhere, you can imagine. Then, yeah, homing makes sense, so I'm glad that they implemented it. Or, I'm glad that I'm kind of hallucinating enough to imagine that it's homing. Weird. So, I mean, if you remember from OutRun, not only did it have the branching paths, but, like, each individual stage wasn't necessarily a killer. Let's go to the C. That's right, I'm sucker for verbs that begin with S. But each, each level on OutRun wasn't necessarily, like, so deadly. Like, you could just blast right through each level of OutRun. And it kind of seems to be the case with this game. I mean, another weird little influence from a Sega arcade game that, like... You just would not think that it would include, be included. Because, I mean, you saw that last boss in, in particular. That boss, like, put up nothing. No fight whatsoever. Now this, this is more like it. Things are going crazy. You've got the occasional obstacle you need to dodge. Uh, I really do like those, like, crazy spikes, though, that just come out of nowhere. I mean, it, it looks amazing. And it adds that, like, extra little bit of spice to the gameplay. Oh, they're gonna make me work to not die. That's clever. So, I mean, what they're doing is, like, obviously when the bridge comes, you have to dodge the bridge. But there are only so many ways you can dodge it, and so they're trying to take away one of my escape routes. It's a neat, clever little way of doing level design to make things a little harder, while at the same time keeping the hardness fair. Because, I mean, it's, it's not like it's an insane amount of enemies. It's just you place them in the right spot, and it's really hard. But if you know what you're doing, you can handle it. On that sad note, though, or on that happy note, though, sadly, we've got bosses that are a little, only a little, reminiscent of earlier bosses. Is that really how this game is going to play things? Like, it's only going to have, like, two or three bosses, and then... In higher levels, it's just gonna be like, oh, but we'll have seven of them. It's completely new, right? Oh. <laughs> well, you know the pattern by now. Nice, quick, quiet little theme, though, in the meantime, so we can just kind of recoup our health, just kind of focus in again. Ah, what, what previous boss do you think this boss is gonna be like? Oh, wow. So, I mean, it used to be in, like, arcade games like the 80s or something, you'd only see, like, a constant background. Like, the background would never change, but this game seems to have already implemented, like, flashing light in the background and stuff. And that's stuff that, like, I really don't remember seeing in, like, any other 80s game. And I mean, granted, this is 89, so it's, like, towards the end of that cycle, but this game was, like... Well, it was either really pushing it back in the day, or following very closely on the heels of games that were pushing it back in the day. Which is awesome. Because, I mean, we're here we're now, we're looking at that, like, quick little period where games went from, like, the 80s, where, like, every other game was a shoot-em-up with a black screen, where you were, where they justified it by saying you were in space, to where now you've got awesome games, like, super scrolling, at least 16-bit, if not crazy more. There's kind of games going on. Actually, yeah, so I mean, the Genesis was like probably new around here, but I don't even think this is like 16 bit. It feels like more, even though this is an 89 bit. Dang. It might be a 16 bit game. Who can really tell? Shield is breaking up. So we put in a quarter and we've lasted 9 minutes. Good golly. Quarters lasted 90 minutes? This game probably made you pay more than a quarter. Oh, I wonder if it had, like, a whole flight... You are dead. Well, okay, that reminds me. I put in another quarter earlier, but... It feels like you really get your money's worth. Assuming, of course, that it's just one quarter to play. Actually, I bet, like, a game this visually impressive, they probably could justify charging more. And... I'm very certain it has, like, some sort of... Uh, joystick, flight stick. Rather than an arcade stick. Although, it is... To its credit, um, well, C's sometimes sound like S's.
to its credit, I mean, the game really is, like, it, it controls very nicely with an arcade stick, even though it's, like, inherently digital and not analog. You can do it. Oh. <laughs> oh, it even has sound samples. It's got every single gimmick. Oh, that's an ally, okay. I was thinking, like, how best can I shoot him down? But that's no good. So earlier in the beginning, it showed us the bosses where it was like the two different helicopters, like one was gold. Are those, are those the bosses or just the stage enemies? <laughs> just by tapping on a direction, you make your guy just like kind of freak out. It's pretty great. Oh, have you ever noticed in like sh shoot 'em up games or something with arcades? Like, okay. Have you ever played with an arcade stick? You know that you can like very easily and rapidly press directions. And then so you can make your ship kind of like do this and like freak out. But did you know that it's actually a really nice way of controlling like exactly where your ship is going to be in uh, shoot 'em ups? Try it out. It's a neat little technique to try. And I mean, yeah, if you're playing with someone else, they're going to like instantly complain that you're being louder than an F-27. But otherwise, it's an interesting little thing you can do, so you can like position yourself exactly where. It doesn't make much sense here, where like going in circles is the name of the game. Oh, that is so freaky, going in circles with um... Hey, this boss reminds me of a boss, perhaps the first stage boss? Come on, guys. Well, I guess it really does come full circle, which is a little ironic, because I can barely do circles in this game. I can understand the necessity for um, reversing the up and down, but it just makes going in circles just that much little bit harder. Well, there goes my uh, illustrious three-quarter run. Let's go for the four-quarter run. For the solution, not play any better, just put in more quarters. Oh, are we, do we have MVP, the stage? Oh yeah. Dang, that was a full run in like 12, 13 minutes? This game goes by really quickly. It must have been pretty sweet back in the day, just like blast through this game, um, check out the amazing graphics, just rush through. And now we're just gonna go through all the credits. It's one of the more annoying parts of beating a game. You have to like sit down and watch all the credits. And I mean, you have to. You're you're actually obligated to. I mean, you put that time into the game. You might as well watch the credits. At least we've got like a nice little ending theme. Although that was kind of funny and like. If you noticed in the text thing that it gave you, it's like, oh, but were they really rescued? It's trying to add in like a small teeny little bit of um, drama into this like already threadbare plot. Ooh, rainbows. Now you know Team Zuntada, they're special, because they got the rainbows in the credits. <laughs> special thanks to many other people! <laughs> yeah, we want to give you a special thanks, but we don't want to mention you by name or anything. Oh, Taito, you lovable bastards. <laughs> Good golly. Well, that was, uh... Pretty... Oh my god, this is amazing! Oh wow. I'm a sucker for good ways to enter your name, but. And this! That was beyond amazing. That was going above and beyond. That, Taito, you may have taken like all of the, um, 
gameplay characteristics of every Sega arcade game around the time that you could imagine, but with that name entry screen, you have surpassed them all. I applaud you, Taito. You've really lived up to your reputation. Well, that was Night Striker, and it's not every day you can just blast through a game in like 12 something minutes. I mean, sure, to its credit, it is branching paths, so it kind of wants you to be able to do that, but um. Hey, neat little game. Kind of lacking in replay value, though. Like, there's not quite so much challenge. Like, you don't feel like you have so much control over the action or, like, what even happens. So there is that kind of, like, making you a little loath to play it again. But hey, that first time through, just seeing all the graphics and, like, especially, too, this game is, like, 89, so those graphics would have been pretty impressive. That, that was pretty impressive. Well, on that note, this cat's got a scat.